a very good morning and a very good afternoon. Um, our world is changing and that has created a lot of global challenges. COVID-19 pandemic is something that um, we are one of our highest concerns at the moment. It is because that it has impacted us in ways that we couldn't imagine it is possible right now. Failure to contain and mitigate this pandemic would result in the loss of lives in much more numbers that we are looking at right now. And also equally important is the potential devastation when it comes to economic depressions. We need more understanding so that we can make the right decisions and actions moving forward. To begin with, what is contact tracing? So according to WHO, contact tracing is a process that we identify and manage people who have been exposed to this disease so that we can prevent and break the chain of transmissions. And it is becoming an essential uh, public health tool for the health organization around the world for controlling this virus. And what you should know, geography plays an important role over here. By working with global health experts, this is how we're going to support you in contact tracing using our technology. In my presentation today, uh, I will talk about two methods, case movement tracing and case location relationships tracing. Both will use ArcGIS ready to use tools that everybody can use. Let's talk about the first one, the case movement tracing. As GIS professionals, we tend and frequently analyze the position of the data according to the space and time. So we can actually do the same approach and method to identify possible contact traces or contact events. We need to know two things. We need to know the distance and we need to know the durations. And from there, we are able to identify and visualize how these contacts and possible um, transmissions happen from one person to another. As an example, imagine case C as a COVID-19 carrier and you would see how it infecting to the case B, B to A and C to D. And another method is about case location relationships. Contact tracing is not about individuals, but it's also about their behavior as well as the places that they have been. We are talking about homes, schools, offices, groceries, place of worship, and even restaurants. These are the locations that all of us, including you and me, are frequently visiting during our daily activities. What if we can correlate the two of them to get the answers? We want to find the number of exposures of these contacted cases. We want to profile the cases through um, age, uh, genders, as well as possible symptoms and comorbidity that they might be having. And we also would like to identify the tiers and clusters they're coming from. And we need data, right? So data can come in a lot of ways and they can be massive. You can have spreadsheets, databases, and even spatial data sets, such as demographics and point of interests. But it also can be complicated and at times be frustrating. This is where using our technology, we can help you to simplify the understanding by grouping all of them in into this insight project. We're going to fuse the data through common IDs and proximity so that we can actually drag and drop them into a pack of cards. We can have a map showing where the cases are and link relationships to find the correlations. I can also have cases and locations as textual tables and representations for symptoms and clusters can be made through charts and graphs. And as data gets updated at the source, it will be reflected in here as well. So, um, as these um, informations uh, get accessible, we can actually share it with the people who are going to need it. And they can actually access it using their desktops, uh, command centers, or even their tablets. So now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to have a lot of interesting demos that I'm going to share with you today.
Right. At SV, we are creator for this uh, proximity tracing tools that uh, you can actually download it from RGS online. It has the proximity tracing tools, sample data sets that you can play around, and documentations as well. And you can download it for free, ladies and gentlemen. So in here, we have documentation folders with data, data sets as well as the document for, uh, directories and files, geoprocessing tools. All you need to use is RGS Pro 2.5 and above. We have uh, best practices and usage information. We'll tell you how to install it and how to actually use it. Now, I'm going to open up my RGS Pro right now. So you are seeing a raw people movement of data in this very area. So if I click into one of the points, you have two informations, user ID as well as time set. So imagine in this scenario, user three is a confirmed COVID-19 carrier, and we're going to use this proximity tracing tools in order to identify the possible impacted people using two criteria, distance and durations. I'm going to specify the input points, which is the raw tracks that I have right now. And the specifying the trace event as one output, I'm going to use user ID. I'm going to type in the user tree as the object of interest in this case. I'm going to trace as far back as May, March 30th. And I'm going to use two meters as search distance within 30 seconds of uh, proximity. And I'm going to specify the detailed trace track as uh, another output. And I'm going to run it. Right. So now let me show you the output of these results. So we have two output. One is being called the trace event layer, and one is trace track layer. So trace event layer, this is where we see where the context actually happening, one, two, and three. Right. So as I open the attribute table, and if I click into the second records, it shows the tracing from user three to user four. You can treat this as the first transmission contact within five minutes of duration. The second, the third records and the fourth record corresponding on transmission from user four to one and user four to five. Okay. And this happens within an instant. And you can actually treat these two records as the possible second transmission tier or possible second transmission contact. So now we open up with the detailed press track. These are the extracted detail movements for user one, user three, four, and five. So since it has uh, temporal data in it, I'm going to enable the time series right now in my RGS Pro, and I'm going to visually see where the context actually happening. I'm going to zoom in right now, and I'm going to see user three in blue and it will have a contact with user four in green. So they are spending five minutes of their time at this very building. Okay, let's zoom out, go to the second location. I'm gonna fast forward this to the next day at 10 o'clock, somewhere around right now. So now we we'll see user four in green, they're actually doing a morning run around this area and you would see the user one having in contact just for a brief moment. That is the second uh, possible contact, second tier of possible contacts. Now, let's zoom into the, the other locations. And now we see the same uh, user four in, in green having contact with user five. And that's how easily it is for us to use these proximity tools in in, a, in my demo, and you can actually use the same as well. So now I'm going to share you the second examples that I have for you guys today. And we are talking about case location relationships. And this is actually the spreadsheets of cases, movements, and medical centers. I'm going to combine this, all three, into my RGS inside. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build relationships between movements and cases. And then I'm going to bring in the locations into this map. And I'm going to 
change the appearance of this point to be more representative in terms of size and the color so that we can actually see our data in much more better representation. So as I zoom in, the red represents the cases where they are and the light blue represents the places that they have been visiting. To correlate with this map, I'm going to bring in additional data from the movement, such as location ID and case ID as a link chart. So in this case, I'm going to change the point label from case ID into locations, and the other side will be case ID. Right. Now, I can actually enable the cross filters. So when, when it happens, if I click into case one, it will be reflecting to the other case uh, card maps that I have on the left. To supplement this information, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to bring in data, combination of case ID, age, gender, and household into one table. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to uh, find location, type, and exposure as one table. I'm going to go back into our GIS data. I'm going to go to the EB level. And in this case, I'm going to go narrow down to elderly populations that we have from 50 until 74. And I'm going to drag it over to my tables on the right to create one table. And finally, I'm going to zoom down, go back into my original data. I'm going to bring in the symptoms represented by charts. Maybe this time, I'm going to get it reflected in three maps. And I'm going to bring in comorbidity data as bubble charts. That is how easily it is for me to drag and draw data from various source. Uh, and I can imagine you can actually do the same as well. Now we look into the final data. So this is KK using a training data sets. If I click into uh, case one, Okay. We know that the person has went into Pasar Pharma. And we click on the Pasar Pharma. We know that from the case one, we have three more cases, starting with case six, case 14, and case 15. About case 15, we know that the person has been into DBKK, and the person has infected case 13. And that case 13 went to the nearby church as well as the center point. So you see the movements from one carrier to another, right? So if we can actually bring down the data, then you see how we can actually profile the case. We see the case on the table on the left, their age, their gender, how many people or family members staying with the case. And we see from Pasa Pharma, we know that there are 1,200 check-ins at that period of time. And then we can also determine the elderly populations at that very area from 50 to 74. Scrolling down further, we see the composition of the severity, the age, as well as the clusters that they came from, the first symptoms being detected for COVID-19, and comorbidity. So in this case, we identified that there are uh, two of them having a CKD, critical kidney diseases, and four of them on medications for diabetic. And additionally, we can also cross-link with hospitals. We can identify in terms of their capacity from ward, ICU, and their um, ventilators that they have at their disposal. So this is actually the tracing that we can do at the city level or the state level. The next thing I'm going to show you, ladies and gentlemen, is how we can actually show you tracing at the global level. Right about now, this is actually ICAO uh, web applications showing us the first transmission wave from Wuhan to the rest of the cities globally. And let's take a look at how US is doing, how badly it is. Let's look at Canada, Portugal, Spain, Italy, Germany, and UK. And let's head back to China where all everything started. Center of Wuhan, then what we're going to do from here is that you see this lines that scroll into Malaysia. So we want to see the first three flights with all of this carrier, right? The first wave. So we know that Penang flights to Penang, to KL, as well as to KK. So by combining all of these elements, uh, methods and elements, we want to derive a simplified answers to the authorities. And this is where uh, I would call this as a key grading areas. 
right? So the key grading areas in this case is that we actually aggregating all of this tracking movement data into this uh, very interactive smart colors using our technology. Okay, so we have the number of contact points and the final uh, confirmed cases through this uh, quadrant of colors. We pay attention to the top right, which is highlighted in dark blue. These are the locations that uh, the authorities can actually consider in implementing a small-scale RMCO so that we can contain the virus without impacting other people who are not being you know, um, affected by this. What I'm going to show you also is how um, Canada is using our technology. They are using the same technology on how they want to do nationwide tracing for COVID-19. Right? So we have uh, the cases, the whereabouts of the cases in the entire Canada, cross link with the gender and then the age and confirmed cases by province. But if you should look at how the potential flow of this COVID-19. So if I click from abroad, right? So we can see it has tier to the province, such as Quebec, and the cities, and how many counts that cases have been reported. And on the right, we see the sources of these cases from cities around the world. So let's go back to my slides. Uh, I would like to actually wrap up. Okay. Malaysia is very blessed in many ways that we are in the exiting phase of RMCO. Then some of you would actually ask us, is contact tracing relevant right now? Do we need it? We have to bear in mind that there is still no vaccine yet uh, being in production. So we have to actually use this capability for us to continue with our lives in the new normal. And when the new cases are arising, the authorities need to have ability to do quick identifications and response um, to these new cases so that we can implement smaller and more focused uh, RMCO areas with uh, ability for us to ensure economy and business continuity for those who are not affected. And this is also applicable to other usages as well. We talk about how we can actually use the same capability to manage dengue. And we can actually use this to do intelligence gathering. On a global scale, right, this is uh, organization that are using our technology, health organizations. At the center of it, WHO, CDC of the United States, Italy, Europe CDC, South Korea, Australia, Germany, Hong Kong, Singapore, and of course, Malaysia Ministry of Defense, uh, Ministry of Health. So as a conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, we are living in unprecedented time where our humanity existence is being tested right now with this COVID-19. We are seeing more than 11.5 million of cases. And out of that, more than 500,000 have reported death globally. People know that geography plays an important role. At ESRI, we are doing our best to make sure that we can enable you and empower you to use our analytic capabilities in contact tracing or any analytics requirement to derive an answer because clear understanding will help you and help us to react to the right decisions and ultimately save a lot of lives. With that, thank you very much.